I'm Nikhil from Google, and I'm here to give an intro about SIG Multicluster. I'm doing it on behalf of Christian Bell, who's the SIG lead. And I think Quinton was also here, who's the other SIG lead. So you can get started. To give you a high-level agenda of what we'll be covering in the next 20, 25 minutes, first I'll give a quick overview of what our mission is, what we do at SIG Multicluster, and then how we are going about it, what are the different projects we have. I'll go through some of the top level ones we have, which is Federation, Cluster Registry, and the CubeMCI tool for multi-cluster ingress. And at the end, we'll have about 10 minutes for Q&A. So that should be good. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to get a, a feel of like how many people know about SIG multi-cluster and have joined the call, and who are like totally new who are totally new, once can raise their hand. Oh, lots of. <laughs> OK, so I'll yeah, try to give a high level overview. And if there's any question you can have, you can feel free to ask them like, while we go through these slides as well. We'll keep it interactive. Uh, so the mission, our mission is to solve challenges about managing multiple clusters and then deploying applications across them. So cluster management and application management over those clusters. And the way we are doing it is we have multiple tools, APIs that we design, document, and implement to be able to achieve these goals. And to give you a bit of history, the way we had started was it was called SIG Federation before. And we were working on Federation very actively. And SIG Federation was like one of the first three SIGs in Kubernetes. So we've been working on it for a while. But now we are also working on a Federation V2 approach, which I'll talk about here. And also, trying to come up with smaller, well-scoped tools for each of those problems so that we can support those tools better. They can go GA independently, and we can support them. And you can build and integrate each of those tools together and solve multiple problems together. But if you have like a smaller one, like let's say multi-cluster ingress, that's the only problem you have, then you just use like QMCI. Or if you only want cluster list, then you just use cluster registry. You don't need to use like the full suit. So that's so standalone building blocks. That's what we are trying to do. And we have our mission and more details, which you can look on the community GitHub repo. So this is a high-level list of all our sub-projects. We are working on Federation V2, which is like the next version of Federation V1. With Federation V1, what we were trying was to use Kubernetes API to solve multi-cluster issues. So like, let's say deployments, and you want to deploy your app to multiple clusters. We were still using the Kubernetes API, which is for single cluster, and trying to use that same and expand to multi-cluster. And there are some problems that come in. Like for multi-cluster, you need to provide some additional information about like, how many replicas in each cluster. Then similarly, you want status from each cluster rather than a unified. And then like, if you're doing rolling update, how do you do rolling update across clusters? So there were some problems with Federation V1. So in Federation V2, we are trying to come up with like, a different multi-cluster API. Then there's cluster registry. A very common use case we heard for people working with multi-clusters is they just want a list of their clusters. Like right now, people have their cube configs, and there are multiple people in the company working on multiple clusters. Each has their own cube config. And then any time a new cluster is added or removed, everyone updates their cube config. That turns out to be messy. And so like cluster registry is that single API endpoint where you can list all your clusters, and it gives you a Kubernetes API over list of clusters. So you can do like label selections. You can use kubectl with like get clusters, create clusters, list clusters, all of those. So like that was a major use case. So we decided like cluster registry is a well-scoped project that does just the cluster list. And then another very common use case we heard was like multi-cluster ingress. People want load balancing across multiple clusters. So the scenario is you have your app deployed in multiple clusters in US, Europe, Asia, and now you want a single IP address and route users to any of those clusters in any of those region, GCP regions or anywhere or your data centers, wherever you have, but have a single IP address for that. So kubemci is that standalone OSS CLI tool which helps you build multi-cluster ingresses. And then Federation V1. So Federation V1 was moved out of the, it was in core k slash k repository, and we moved it out. And we had a lot of lessons learned from it, like some of which I talked about, that like Kubernetes API makes really sense for the cluster level. So we're trying to come up with like a multi-cluster API, and there's a lot of work going on that. And I'll also talk about Federation V2. So Federation V2, where we are right now, is we have a prototype 
which you can look at that GitHub repository. And it uses cluster registry for list of clusters, and then it has other controllers built on top. And the way we are defining the API is basically three things, uh, template, placement, and override. So template is the common template, which would be same across all your clusters. So taking an example of deployments again, you have the same pod spec. So like that would be template. Then you have placement you want to define, like this should go in my US clusters or like cloud clusters or data center clusters. So you can have some placement directives. And then there are per cluster overrides as well. So like you want only one replica in some clusters, so you can provide some exact overrides. So that's an example of how we'll do it with deployment, but trying to extend that same model to other APIs as well. And the way we are doing it is we'll implement them as like CRDs over cluster registry. And so tomorrow we have a deep dive as well. So we are going to show a deeper demo of this. So if you are interested, you should join that. The roadmap is, as I said, we want to implement all of these APIs as CRDs. We want to implement a third party pluggable DNS controller. There's another interesting project called Cube Applier, which pulls changes. So the model with Federation was there was this global control plane running that pushed changes to all the clusters. Cube Applier is an open source tool from Box, which what it does is you run from your you run it in your an agent in your cluster and it pulls it from a common source. So that's also an interesting model that we are exploring and trying to come up with shared federated informer for federation controllers. We're going to do all these standard Kubernetes types and we'll do them one by one. So we have a roadmap for those. And there are some issues we're still figuring, like I said, status aggregation, like do uh, people want individual per cluster status as well, or they want like full aggregated cluster. So how we surface that in the API and like some of those issues. So next I wanted to talk about cluster registry. As I said, like one of the common use cases was just list of clusters. So that is what cluster registry is. It's an API server with a cluster resource and you can run kubectl, create cluster, get cluster, list cluster. You can add labels to them. So you can get like list of all staging clusters or list of all prod clusters. And you can do like developer A gets list of clusters A and B and developer B gets like B and C. You can add RBAC rules to them. So cluster list would have like all the clusters, but one developer can only list like testing clusters or someone admin can list only all the prod clusters. So you can build all those primitives over this and you can use all existing Kubernetes tools. It's a standard Kubernetes API server. And you can write your YAML spec. You can be more declarative about it. So, and it's being used for, like we want to use it for Kubernetes clusters, but it's actually just uh, any Kubernetes API server list. And like Istio is using it for Istio service mesh as well for multi-cluster service mesh. It want to keep a list of multiple clusters. The API is alpha right now, and we are planning to move it to beta. The only blocking thing we have right now is whether the cluster list should be namespace, and there's some discussion happening around it in the SIG, but we, should, we hope to resolve it soon, and so the API should be beta soon enough. So we want to have more users use it, try it out, build tools over it. And like the aim is that it's very simple to use. It's just a cluster list. You can integrate it with your CI CD pipeline or any other tool you want, which wants a list of clusters. So like very scoped tool. This is how the cluster spec looks like. So this is the GitHub repository where it is. You can go take a look, file issues, try it out. And this is the general cluster kind. It has the API endpoint and the CA bundle, and you can add basic cluster information. So this is different than, there's been some confusion because it's called cluster. There's also a cluster API that's being worked by a SIG cluster lifecycle, and that is more for, like how do you want to bring up clusters on like GCP, AWS, on-prem, and they have all the knobs that each of these cloud providers provide, like you want to bring up API server, what all flags should it have? So that is a lot more details. Unfortunately, that's also called cluster resource, and this is as well, but like these are different. This is a very simple uh, cluster representation. And like the aim here is that ultimately you should, this could also replace like cube config or could be integrated wherever you use your cube config. Sure. Um, sorry for interrupting you, I had a question. Sure. So <clears throat> for cluster registry, does it define? Does it define only, um, uh, 
runtime configuration of a class, like uh, I see like only endpoints, or you also define a spec of how to create a cluster? No, so this is only the runtime configuration, that like the cluster exists, and now you want to do some work over it, like deploy some workloads, or monitoring, logging, or whatever you want to do. So this, like, this is about how to reach that cluster. So similar to the way you use kubeconfig. Yeah. Yeah, next, what I wanted to talk about was multi-cluster ingress. So as I said, like a very common use case we had is, I have my app deployed in multiple clusters, but now I want to configure a, a, a multi-cluster ingress. I want a single IP endpoint, which then sends traffic to all my clusters. And you have clusters in different regions, and you want, like if a, Europe cluster, Euro, a customer from Europe hits your IP address, they go to the Europe cluster. And someone from Asia hits your IP address, they go to Asia, and similarly, US, customer goes to US. You want that for like geo latency, so that like you serve users from the closest customers it's for least latency. You want it for HA reasons. Like even if your Europe cluster goes down, those customers are still served from Asia or US. So at least like they're not getting full of us, they're at least being served. So this the advantage is that this makes you resilient to clusters going down or even on cloud providers availability zones going down or full regions going down. So you have clusters in like different availability zones. Again, we'll have a demo of this tomorrow at our deep dive, so you should come. And Greg and I are also giving a talk on multi-cluster ingress tomorrow at, I think, around 3 p.m. So if you want, they will be sharing more details there. The way this QMCI CLI tool works is it takes your ingress, Kubernetes ingress definition, and today it takes like kubeconfig, which is your list of clusters. But again, like we want it to integrate with cluster registry as well. So if you have a cluster registry endpoint working, you could list there. But Essentially, it needs a list of clusters and your ingress spec, and it configures Google Cloud Load Balancer today to give you that setup that I just described. But you can extend it to support others as well. So upcoming plans are to integrate with cluster registry for a list of clusters, extend it to other providers, and follow SIG networks lead to. So the ingress spec, as it works in current Kubernetes API, it only makes sense for a single cluster. We want to extend it to make sense for multi-cluster as well. So do more fancy stuff. Like right now, what QMCI does is, it like sends traffic based on the location. So it's, it's one load balancing mode that it supports. There are a lot of other load balancing modes you might have, like you're cannering a new cluster, or so you want like 5% traffic, 90% traffic, or so a lot of other fancy load balancing modes. So for that, we need like, to define the API as well. Right now, KubeMCA supports this geo latency use case. This is uh, like a block diagram of how it works. So you have users from California and Berlin, and you have two clusters. So users get routed to the right cluster. This is how you run the command, kubemci create. You give it an ingress spec list of clusters. It configures Google Cloud Load Balancer, and which gives you a single IP address. And you can give it to your customers. That's the major projects we have. And if there are any question answers. Yeah. Uh, so just I'd like to understand more the multi-cluster ingress use case. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that your implementation has the Google Cloud load balancer in, in it. Yeah. Um, without that, would any DNS uh, feature allow us to achieve similar? Uh... Yeah. So the advantage with Google Cloud balancer, load balancer is that it has the Anycast IP and like with Google's wide network presence, you can do that. It's possible to do it with the other DNS servers as well, and yeah, you can if it like, like supports this that like users from Asia are routed to Asia and users from Europe are routed to Europe correctly. So then you can extend KubeMCI tool to support those other providers as well. Yeah. Hey. So this cloud registry API that you mentioned before, where does it reside? I mean, where does it live? So it's on open source GitHub repository, Kubernetes slash cluster registry. The API itself, so I mean the, the service itself. So if I have several clusters, so do I select a cluster that I want to deploy it into, or it's just it's replicated across clusters, so how does this work? Yeah, great question. So this is a different API server that you have where you install your cluster list, and then you run it on an existing Kubernetes cluster, one of those that you already have, or you can have a different Kubernetes cluster where you run this a host cluster, especially for cluster registry. Yeah, And you can install like other CRDs, like I said. Can I extend that question? Is around having a separate control plane for multi-cluster, or that would be kind of federated control plane? You mean 
uh, like in federation v2 approach or like generally or uh, in in that case like do do you think control plane separate from the from the current uh, kubernetes control plane but sitting above of that yeah so one of the use case for like this multi cluster control plane is to be able to run on multiple clusters do operations and be resilient to each of those clusters going down. So yes, like the, uh, you need higher availability for this rather than like each of those individual clusters. If you run it in any one of those clusters and that becomes your like master critical cluster that if it goes down, you can't do any multi-cluster operations. Yeah. yeah. And actually other people working on multi-cluster can come up as well and as there are more questions. Yeah. Team come up as well, Greg and Irfan. So um, uh, I think what you uh, uh, questioned was that where exactly, it's same as cluster registry also, and same for uh, FCP control plane, that where exactly uh, does that run? So uh, currently, so initially, uh, the way it ran was that uh, we had to have a dedicated base cluster in Federation V1, and that was it. So as Nikhil mentioned, that uh, that becomes your point of failure also. So now what we are trying to extend or what we are building is that uh, there could be different configurations it can run with. It can run as an aggregated API, or it can run as uh, uh, all, same, it's same with all the Federation V2 also now, Federation V1 and cluster registry also that we can run it uh, based on configurations. It can be run as uh, aggregated, or it can be uh, FCP as an older mechanism, or uh, it could be a uh, uh, CRD installed server. So next work is uh, based on the CRD related work. So the Federation we want only supported certain Kubernetes um, object types, uh, but you mentioned that you plan to support uh, every Kubernetes type in Federation V2. So I'm really curious how you imagine that's, that's going to work because yeah. of course some resource types don't make a lot of sense in a, in a federated yeah. Uh, context. Yeah, and like that was a problem we had in Federation V1. We were always playing catch up to like Kubernetes is moving so fast. So yeah, I let Irfan, who's working on Federation V2. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, that's actually a very in nice question. So uh, in Federation V1, we did, uh, uh, as he mentioned, uh, a catch up with some APIs and there were some really hard APIs or uh, uh, hard types to integrate into Federation, right? So currently in V2, our approach is that we have, uh, for all APIs, as you mentioned, we have some basic uh, sync mechanism, which can sort of replicate, uh, for example, if you are creating a, a, a secret, it could be just replicated in all uh, clusters. And that sync mechanism is a single sync mechanism. You just have to install a, a, a API type or an adapter to it. And you can uh, replicate it to uh, all the types. But it will be a simple replication. Okay, and then we are, what we are trying to do is we are trying to build a, a, a layered approach to this. So more complicated types might have their specific uh, scheduling kind of stuff or whatever specific stuff that needs to be done for that particular type can be built in a, a layered approach into a different controllers. So for all APIs, our target is they can be simply synced. For example, if you are creating stateful set also, it could just for example, if you're creating a stateful set in Federation, what uh, this approach will do is it'll create same stateful sets in all, but not providing uh, what really stateful sets provide in Kubernetes, right? Now, uh, a more complicated approach could be using this mechanism, you can build a stateful set scheduler later, or somebody else who wants to actually run only that stateful set workload can build their own controller to uh, do what they really want. I should probably also clarify the different maturity of all of these projects. Like Federation V2, we have an early working prototype, but we are still exploring like a lot of those concepts. QMCI is like a, is a supported product on Google Cloud, and like Cluster is just is also we are, it's alpha, and some people are using it, and we want to graduate it to beta soon. Can you quickly describe the flow of somebody who's got maybe like four or five different clusters that are just kind of using switch context today? If they were using this multi-cluster API, what would like what would the start of the day look like for them if they're trying to jump around a bunch of clusters and a bunch of different namespaces? Yeah, so it depends. Like today, if you're just using plain kubectl, yeah, you have to keep changing your context and like write simple shell scripts for for looping around it. So you could build 
like you you could use cluster registry and build fancy dashboards around it which like goes through this list and uh, like just fetches all your deployments or other workloads that you're running and shows them in a fancy UI or you could build them in your integrated with your existing logging monitoring pipelines that you have that instead of which you were using for single cluster now you integrate it with cluster registry and expand it to like multiple clusters and so use your existing tools or you like we are exploring federation you could try that or you extend your existing tools so like we want to give all these different options that like what you want and use these building blocks together and tie them together to come up with your like a multi cluster solution that's good for you like, your individual needs Um, uh, do uh, cluster federation and uh, Kubernetes are uh, loosely coupled? Uh, can I run, for example, multiple multi-cluster federation over multi-Kubernetes clusters independently? Yes, okay. and do you want to add more? So the question is, for example, I've got uh, one company and it runs its own uh, Kubernetes federation and another company that runs its own Kubernetes federation over the uh, common set of Kubernetes clusters. Will that survive? Yeah, so uh, if I uh, understood the question correctly is uh, what you are saying is that a same cluster can, can a same cluster be part of multiple federations, right? So yeah, the concept of federation is that uh, federation is actually an user, uh, a user of Kubernetes. So the control plane uh, basically acts as uh, currently, uh, for example, an admin user for, uh, for each cluster. And uh, once you uh, have joined a cluster to a particular federation, this FCP, the control plane has the uh, user rights to do what it can do with the, uh, those clusters, create workspaces or uh, create uh, uh, workloads or uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, multiple federations, uh, multiple clusters could be part of multiple federations uh, used by different users. Yeah. Yeah. This one at the end. Yeah, Sir Fan here works on Huawei and is working on Federation V2. Hi. Uh, last I looked, Federation had the ability to send workloads to multiple clusters, but to get or to view the workloads across all the clusters, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't there yet. Is that something that's in the works so I can do kubectl get against the federated context and see everything everywhere? We have to we have to get it on my <laughs> So I, I think Nikhil mentioned this earlier that uh, uh, we are trying to uh, and uh, uh, this gentleman asked uh, uh, what about the plans of integrating all the APIs. So uh, uh, we actually had a plan of integrating all the APIs in the read mode uh, while we were working on V1. But uh, uh, that did not sort of uh, come across as the really needed uh, uh, per se uh, feature. Uh, uh, because you can have a uh, user access to rest of the clusters and a simple script can give you this view access. Uh, uh, in future, uh, right now, we don't uh, necessarily have a plan to integrate all the APIs. What we are sort of doing is we'll we are trying to build a reference model of uh, uh, what mentioned, uh, uh, what Nikhil mentioned as building blocks for uh, multi-cluster use cases. So we are taking it in steps, and we are doing it in the layered mode. So as uh, I mentioned in the answer to the earlier question, that in Federation V2, we are trying to come up with a sync type of mechanism for all APIs, where you can, uh, uh, even if it does not exist in uh, the reference model in open source, it should be really easy to uh, just integrate one more API type or a new API, API type which comes up in Kubernetes to integrate to this V2 project. So in that case, uh, what you are asking would be possible. But we are not there yet. Yeah, sure. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm still talking about registry API. So uh, 
Are there any plans to integrate you know, some kind of role-based access control to the list of clusters? Or you know, because as I see from your example, I publish the cluster endpoint and then certificate, so basically all the, all the information I need to access the cluster. So whoever access API can access all the clusters listed there, right? So, but would like to probably split it so some person can only see clusters or some view credentials and so on and so forth. So any plans on, on this? Yeah, that's a great question. And so I did allude to that we are having the discussion that whether clusters should be namespaced or not. And one of the guiding factors is to add RBAC rules. Like we want to support a use case where, like I said, that you have a list in the company has like three clusters, A, B, and C, but you want a developer only to be able to access A and B, and like some other developer only gets access to B and C. So we do want to support RBACs, and the way to do it is then we we'll need to add namespaces. So right now, cluster object is not namespace code, but Yes, to support our back, we will need to make it namespace code, and we do want to support these access control use cases. Yeah. Will you refer to that as namespacing? Feels like a little like you have namespaces outside the cluster and namespaces inside the cluster. Yes, that's exactly. So that is why we are having this discussion. That it does get confusing if like a cluster is in a namespace foo. Like what and what does that mean? Like is that foo exist in all clusters? And like is that some special foo? Like if you have a sync controller, like would it sync in all? So like that becomes a special namespace, which is like a fit, not a federated namespace only in this cluster list, cluster registry. So like those are some of the questions we are working through. Like, but we do want to make it RBAC supported as well, which requires names. Like that's how the RBAC model in Kubernetes works. If you want access control, it has to be namespace code. So like, but we add namespace, then it adds confusion. So just to share our uh, experience. So I'm actually working with that guy that asked the, the question about cluster registry. <laughs> so uh, we currently solving this problem. We introduced another object which is just space. It's like specific type of namespace mm -hmm. uh, which is supposed to be used only by cluster objects. Hmm. Yeah, okay, that's another ex uh, like option we were discussing. Like Kubernetes has this cube system namespace, which is like a privileged system namespace. So we could have uh, like cluster registry system namespace and you can create cluster list on, on that namespace. So if you don't want RBAC support and you don't care about namespaces, like you just create them in this. But if you want to go to an advanced use case, then you'll be able to create namespaces, create RBAC rules on that namespace. Cluster registry is implemented using a Kubernetes API server, right? Yes. So because of that, it has the concept of a namespace, which is really just a way to separate objects within that Kubernetes API server. The problem is it's called namespace. So it, it kind of gets over, overridden with the idea of a namespace where we run pods and do things that are traditional. Yeah. So we may want to consider in the API machinery like coming up with a different name for that concept. So that way we can introduce you know, segmentation in the cluster registry for cluster objects. Right? Yeah, yes, exactly. So today, like, that's the only concept that the Kubernetes API machinery has. Namespace is the only machinery, only thing we have available to do this segmentation and to be able to create RBAC rules. So, like, we are tied to that. It does add some confusion, but that's the only thing we have right now. A great solution would be to introduce another concept that allows us to do this without namespaces. As you mentioned, space. Yeah. Yeah. Your name is John. <laughs> yeah, we could define our own custom resource to do that. Yeah. yeah. But to answer, like that use case is important. Yes, like that's a very common use case we have. You might want to mention that the. Uh, related, related to that, I wanted to mention that the credentials to access the cluster are not stored in cluster registry. So if the user can see the cluster, that doesn't mean that they have uh, access to a cluster necessarily. That needs to be handled outside cluster registry. Yeah, so what we're doing is that cluster registry would give you a pointer to a credential store. And like if you know that it's a GK cluster, then you can run gcloud container get credentials. So like it would point you to the right direction to get credentials. It might not have all the credentials itself. Like cluster registry won't store all, all the information. It'll make it possible for you to do it. Uh, hi, uh, what is the roadmap of bring, uh, bringing the airbag or the network policy to the federation? Uh, where you, where gonna the state of object gonna be uh, production ready? You mean adding them to cluster registry or to federation? To federation. Oh, federation. 
Yep, so um, what you mentioned is actually one of the difficult to solve problems. So um, uh, we are not considering adding RBAC uh, to federation as a type like other types, which would mean that uh, we have uh, RBAC support in federation for clusters, right? Uh, we uh, sort of are not considering that as of now. Uh, we are first considering the uh, admin level use cases. That means uh, the federation would actually have admin access to all the clusters and it can uh, control most of the workloads. But in future, uh, we would probably be uh, thinking about this hard to solve problems as a next step. Last five minutes, anyone has any questions? Yeah, so you can also catch any of us. There's Greg, Irfan, or me, or there are a lot of other people here who work on SIG Multicluster. Feel free to catch any of us anytime in the hallways, or you can join our call. And we are going to have a deep dive session tomorrow, and Greg and I are also doing a talk on multi-cluster ingress. So if any of you are interested in that. And Lindsay is here as well for Federation V2. She'll do a demo tomorrow at deep dive. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so just to repeat the question, the question is that it was the number in mind for number of clusters we want to support for multi-cluster operations. So we've seen like very wide scale. People have like three, five clusters as well, and people have like hundreds of clusters as well. So like, and it also depends on what tool, the scalability depends on what tool you're using. If you're using like cluster registry, it's a Kubernetes API server with just cluster list. That can stay, scale a lot more. And depends, and if you're using some other controllers over it, so like what those controllers do can limit your scalability as well. So we don't have a set like any scalability test that this is what we support and like this is what we want to support. We also want to grow with the community. Like right now we see a lot of people are like early in the journey. They started with one cluster and now they're moving to like multiple clusters. There were a few going on, they would have a lot more. So we would scale as the community grows as well. Yeah. Yeah, and in code, uh, there is no uh, limit actually put as of now. So uh, it depends on uh, your use case. You might have as well have 100 clusters or 1,000 clusters in that case. Yeah, yes, yep. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna interject there. So when we, when we conceived, this is, I presume, in the context of Federation, sorry, I'm double booked with next door, so I'm trying to multitask. Um, we, we sort of had in our mind this idea of, of in the order of 100 clusters would be a, a sort of common use case at the top end. Um, and I think the architecture and the design is, is well suited to those kinds of numbers of clusters. We have come across cases more recently where uh, there are pretty sound arguments for you know two orders of magnitude more. Some of you may have been at CERN, at the CERN keynote this morning. They have a thousand clusters. Uh, we have uh, retailers who have or banks that have you know tens of thousands of outlets, and they wanting to federate these things, treat airport as a cluster, treat each retail Walmart as a cluster, and they have more than a hundred of those. I can I can promise you. Um, so you know I think over time we will uh, figure out how to do that. There there are different approaches. You can actually federate federations, so you can have hierarchical federations of clusters. These things are all possible, um, uh, and or we can you know rearchitect parts of the internals. But I think the APIs are sound for much larger federations than, than 100. I, I don't think there's anything about the APIs that, that limit us to 100 as opposed to 10,000 clusters. Yeah, and I, I think uh, we'd introduce him. I, uh, he doesn't need an introduction. Uh, introduction. He's uh, our SIG lead, Quinton. Quinton. Yeah. Question? Mm. Okay, going once, going twice, <laughs> yeah. gone. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone.